Meg Terrell is here with the latest. Meg, are they just expanding it for the Pfizer shot? So far, yes. The Pfizer vaccine now cleared by the FDA for kids ages 12 to 15 as a booster. Uh, another change the FDA made today also applies only to folks who got Pfizer originally, is that they are now eligible for a booster as soon as five months after the second dose compared with six months. For Moderna, it's still six months. The FDA explaining that by essentially saying they had data for shortening Pfizer and they don't yet have the data for shortening Moderna. Uh, they also cleared third doses for kids who are immunocompromised between the ages of five and 11. Still no word on exactly when a vaccine for even younger children under five will be available. We know that there had been a delay for Pfizer in that, and so a lot of us are still waiting on that. Uh, this as cases are reaching astronomic highs, averaging more than 400,000 per day in the U.S. right now, and you're getting that signature Omicron vertical line up on the case count right now. Hospitalizations are rising, but not at the same clip as cases, and deaths have held relatively steady around 1,200 per day, between 1,200 and 1,300 um, as of right now. So there's hope looking at South Africa and also through some new biological data coming out about the Omicron variant itself that this is milder. However, there are still a lot of warnings about the potential to overwhelm hospitals, some of which we are already seeing right now. Of course, we pay attention to cases because that makes a huge difference in staffing hospitals, being able to staff flights. Uh, Dr. Fauci talking about the pushback to the CDC's recommendation to be able to end isolation after five days without testing. He suggested yesterday that might change. Here's what he said. You're right. There has been some concern about why we don't ask people at that five day period to get tested. That is something that is now under consideration. The CDC is very well aware that there has been some pushback about that. Looking at it again, there may be an option in that, that testing could be a part of that. And I think we're going to be hearing more about that in the next day or so from the CDC. So, Kelly, we'll wait to see if we hear from the CDC about that. At the same time, though, a big problem is just getting that test. It's really difficult right now. Yeah. Kelly? Two practical questions on Omicron, Meg, for those of us who've just uh, had it. Number one, are we likely to get it again? Is it like the cold or the flu in that regard where you might contract some version of it again? And number two, are we spreaders? Can we spread it to others? Well, if you are no longer infected, you shouldn't be able to spread it to others at this point. That question about when you could get Omicron again, how long your immunity should last, that is a key question here. And we just don't know. We're going to have to wait to see the data as to how long the protection will last. And it'll likely come from areas like South Africa first, which went through the infection first. Um, but we don't know how long lasting the protection will be. One good piece of news, though, it does look like Omicron protects against Delta. Hmm. Um, so that is good news, potentially suggesting it could edge the other variant out. Interesting. All right. Meg, thanks as always for that recap. Meg Terrell with the very latest on the COVID front. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.